short introduction and also uh, first off express my thanks to the organizers here, the United for Side Conference, and also my thanks to the University of Utah. And I also want to thank my family. Everywhere I go, my family comes with me. So I'm here, my wife is here, and my two children are here. I have a seven-year-old named Hike and an 11-year-old named Noah. And as we were getting ready to come here this morning, they, my 11-year-old asked me why I look so pale. And I told him it was nerves. He told me I look like Banquo's ghost. So that's my 11-year-old. And my 7-year-old asked me what I would be talking about, and I explained it to him, and he said, but Dad, will you be brief? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my two children in, the, in my life. So uh, a little more information about myself. I am in the public administration program. One of the things I love about global health is how it brings multiple disciplines together as we search for ways to create equity and health outcomes across the world. In my personal life, I've got a long, uh, over a decade of experience working in the private sector, primarily in the areas of sales and marketing. I worked for a number of years for a gentleman named Robert Kiyosaki. He wrote a book named Rich Dad Poor Dad, selling intangibles, real estate mentoring over the telephone, I did that. I also worked in the newspaper and media industry for a number of years, and I would work with small, medium, and large businesses and help them determine how they could reach consumers, how they could figure out how consumers think, how they make their decisions. And so I'd like to uh, present a study that we conducted uh, about sources of health information and relative impact among women in Armenia. And I want to begin my presentation in the year 2012. I have a number of pictures. I've taken all the pictures. Mercifully, I'm not in any of the pictures. The gentleman with the red tie in the center is Dr. Sergei Hachaturian, and he's a Deputy Minister of Health Care for the Republic of Armenia. And we were there uh, with our research group uh, from the University of Utah. Oh, and the, on to Dr. Hachaturian's left is, that is totally my wife, right there, Dr. Hirsume Wright. Um, we were discussing with him his concerns, and this was a normal process for us. We've got a great relationship with the Ministry of Health, and we wanted to know what his needs were, what the needs of the Ministry of Health were, so that we could go out then and help fulfill those needs. And he shared with us his concerns about women's health in Armenia. And some of these concerns are familiar. We know already that women's, a woman's role is critical as health information source for their family, that women worldwide are responsible for personal and family health care decisions. What I didn't know, and what I learned, is that Armenia ranks fourth in the world for breast cancer deaths. That's fourth out of every country in the world, Armenia. And they only have a 21% prevalence of routine medical exams among women in Armenia. And that's among all women in Armenia. If you look at this photo I took here, we have multiple generations of women from one family. We've got the grandmother in the center, her daughters, and then the upper left-hand corner, their daughter. So he asked us, how can the Armenian government deliver health information to women in the most effective way? It's an interesting question. If I were to poll everybody here, how do you get your health information? You might all give me different answers. Some of you might say that you Google whatever question you have. Maybe you go on Facebook and you make a poll to see what your friends think. Maybe there's a magazine you like, or maybe you go on Pinterest and see what someone has pinned about a certain health information source. And I could guess how you would all respond to that. Uh, however, that's, that's not very evidence-based, is it? So we, did, we, uh, we went out then with this directive from the Ministry of Health, and we conducted research. We implemented a cross-sectional study among 225 women in Armenia, and when we, we went to five different areas. 66% were urban settings, and 34% were rural settings. And if you're not familiar with the geography of Armenia, they've got Armenia, they've got Turkey, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Russia, and Iran at their at their border. We developed a survey instrument 
that included demographic information. And then we would ask those surveyed what their current sources of health information were. Was it a medical professional? Were they turning on the television? Were they listening to the radio? Were they going on the internet? Were they on a social network? Is that how they're getting their information? Were they going to family members, print media, or friends? We also asked what their attitudes towards sources of health information were. We wanted to, wanted to know what sources of health information did they trust, and what sources did they deem important. And then we also asked them what preferred future sources of health information they would like to have. So here are our survey results. Uh, 71 of the women fell within the age group of 18 to 29. And their first preferred source of health information was a medical professional. Their second was the television. There were two or three programs that they would watch and, and that had kind of a health focus. And then third, family. Uh, many of these women were starting their own families mothers, and they would go to family members, their own mothers, their mother-in-laws, or their friends' mothers, or their friends' mothers-in-laws. Their future preferred sources of health information were still a medical professional, television, family, and then fourth came the internet. For women ages 30 to 49, we found that once again, Medical professionals and the television were the top two preferred sources of health information. And then third was print, magazines, and newspapers. And the future preferred sources of health information uh, followed suit. For women ages 50 to 64, we found that, again, medical professionals and television were the top two sources of health information. And then the third was a friend. These were the mother-in-laws are the mothers of the new mothers, and they would talk to each other rather than, than their own mothers. And then their future preferred sources of health information, very similar as well. For women ages 65 and up, doctors, television, and print were their top three sources of health information. So if we look at the results together, there seems to be a lot of the the same sources of health information across the, each different age group. However, something that we did not really see much of at all were, were the internet or social media groups, which is, uh, not, it wasn't a significant finding, but it's significant in its insignificance. <laughs> so we looked into that very small number, and we found that the women who did use social media were younger, they were married, and they had a higher education level. And although this is a very, it was a very small, insignificant part of the, the women who were surveyed, it's interesting because it will inform future uh, studies that we implement in Armenia. If you look, when we look at what sources of health information they deem trustworthy or important, the three sources that rank least important and least trustworthy were the internet, social media, and radio. Even in Armenia, they don't trust the internet. <laughs> so what did we recommend? We recommended to the health ministry to conduct programs and outreach by healthcare providers, which they've been doing. We conducted this research in 2012 and since 2013-2014, uh, local health care providers have been conducting outreach that we have participated in. Um, we've also suggested utilizing the television more because it was the uh, second source of health information listed by each group. And we also recommended further rest research regarding health information sources for women, uh, including a study that we're doing this summer that we had uh, discussed with the ministry, which will identify gender gaps in the digital divide and their related health outcomes in Armenia. And again, I'd like to thank everyone for their support. 
I've never gotten a letter for finishing speaking early. I've never gotten a complaint, but that's my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>